Good morning. Today is Thursday, May 11, 2023. We've discussed a number of times organ transplantation after brainstem death in Jewish law. We have discussed the main controversy, which is defining the moment of death, either when the brain stem is dead, and that is the normal case when it is possible to donate organs to save someone else's life, or if we would adopt the standard of when the heart stops beating, even when the patient is on a respirator and the brain stem is no longer working, in which, in which case, if we adopt that position, it's virtually impossible to donate life-saving organs. I've shared my strong opinion in favor of donating organs, uh, organs in accordance with Jewish law, but there is another aspect to this that we really must absorb. During Pesach, the entire Jewish world was horrified at the brutal terrorist attack in Israel that murdered Lucy D. and her two daughters, Maya and Rina. They are survived by Lucy's husband, Rabbi Leo D., two other daughters, Talia and Karen, and one son, Yehuda. The D family made Aliyah from England about eight years ago, and they live in Ephra. The things that have been shared about this family since this happened are just incredible. One of the daughters said at her mother's funeral, Ima would always go around the Shabbos table and ask that everyone share from the previous week three things. Something good that he or she did. Something good that was done for him or her. And something good that God did for him or her. Just incredible in so many, so many ways. And I want to just share this morning just one element among many that deserve our attention. The organs of Lucy D were donated and saved the lives of five recipients. Tragically, the organs of the two daughters were not viable due to the nature of the attack. Since this horrible tragedy, Rabbi D has spoken about this a number of times. He said, since the tragedy, the remaining four of us in the family form a committee and we make decisions together. When the doctors told us the news that his wife Lucy was, had suffered brain stem death and that her body was in a condition that she could donate her organs. Rabbi D said, I brought the family together and we decided to donate the organs. And he explained that this was due to two reasons. One was that his rabbi, his halachic authority, had looked into this matter both in terms of the overall halakhic issue and in terms of the specific medical condition of this woman, Lucy D. And he had said that it was not only acceptable to donate her organs, it was one of the greatest mitzvahs that was possible. And the second reason, he said, Rabbi D. said, is that, that he and Lucy, he and his wife, over the years had discussed this and they had both been very open about the fact that in this catastrophic event, they wanted to be organ donors. And so she did, and she saved the lives of five patients. Last week, the D family went to Balinson Hospital in Tel Aviv, and they met with 
the doctor is involved with the surgeries and they met with three of the five recipients. I want to share a video with you. You may have seen this. It is widely shared and it is widely and easily available if you search for it. Now, this video is mostly in Hebrew. Some of it is in English. We're not going to watch the whole thing together, just excerpts. And the parts that are in Hebrew, I will translate as it's going on. So they're coming in now and they're introducing the family to all of the doctors who were involved in the various surgeries. Of course, you understand it required different doctors because it dealt with different specializations that they were dealing with. This is one of the doctors involved who's saying how amazing this was. This must be one of the most difficult decisions a family, a person would ever have to make to decide to do this. And he's just amazed at the family's decision. Uh, as, uh... <laughs> discussing this and I'm saying, I don't know how I feel. I feel very emotional, but I can't describe it. It's not something which I... So there are certain parts where Rabbi D speaks in English and other parts where he speaks in Hebrew. That's Rabbi D in the middle and his two daughters. His son is on a different seat. Uh, you may see him a little bit later. This is one of the three recipients. The other two recipients wanted to be there also, but they were not physically able to be there. They sent, of course, their best wishes. This is one of the recipients. This is one of the recipients talking about his life. After this transplant, he's been given new life. Everything is okay. He's all right. He can survive. He can live. Incredible. This is a second recipient, this young man. This is his mother. I mean, just try to imagine what a mother would be saying to Rabbi D. Understanding that through his decision, his wife's last act was to save the life of her son. The doctor is just explaining that this boy's condition, how quickly he would have died uh, without this uh, transplant and what this means to him, giving him a new lease on life. So I want to watch this for a couple of minutes. I think that, uh, I can't say this in Hebrew, but the Nativot Shalom writes that the Gula will happen after there's been uh, a terrible uh, situation in the world. And he likens it to a, a seed that when you plant a seed in the ground, the first thing that has to happen, it has to decay. It has to basically die until the whole shell is decayed and everything looks like it's rotten and everything looks like it's completely dead. He said, and only then the life will come through. And I think what you're saying here is that, you, you, that this is your life every day, that you have, uh, you have a decay and you have to deal with this complete uh, the tragedy. And then from that comes the seeds of hope and the seeds of growth. The old I, I, one of the things that that is is just unbelievable. I don't know anything about Rabbi D or his family other than what I've read and what I see. 
Um, he is a person who has gone through one of the worst tragedies imaginable. And it's just a few weeks later, and he, he somehow has the presence to be able to, to speak in this manner, to um, to share this, to, to offer this. It's, it, it is just, it's just incredible. Okay. They're giving gifts. Lives at the moment. The family is explaining they feel very embarrassed at the gifts. Okay, it's understandable. Okay, please watch this carefully. This is the woman who received Lucy D's heart. That's Yehuda D, the son. I mean, just try to imagine the emotions of each of those individuals in this circumstance. So I want to move to the main reason I wanted to show this to you. Of course, they're going to be speaking amongst themselves and expressing some of their emotions. This is another one of the doctors explaining uh, how the surgery went, the complications of it, the, the coordination that was necessary for all these surgeries to save all these lives. There's another one of the doctors who did another transplant discussing his role. When I came here, I don't know the girls can talk maybe later after this. Um, yeah. But I think that it's obvious to people that that's how it would be. To me, I wasn't sure. I thought maybe I would be like down there. This morning, I was, I was in tears. Uh, thinking about it, but now I actually feel, you know, I feel on, on, on an up. So um, you, thank you for, for bringing us back up, and, and uh, please go that will last, you know, longer than the other ups that have come come back down again. And thank and thank you. It's in Hebrew. You don't need a translator. Okay, I I uh, a couple more people I want to thank uh, is first and foremost is my my Rav, my Posek, Rav uh, Baruch Afrati from Efrat, who um, I trusted to make the decision that this was halachically okay. And I put him in touch with Kirill, who's the head of uh, transplants in Hadassah. And they spoke together and they agreed to everything. And they agreed that um, a, a form, a tofes, which we signed, and that was it. And I didn't have to be involved in it. So 
I thank Rabbi Frati, who really was behind this, and to Kirill, and I thank you for making that easy. And I would want to say that, that I've said a number of times that um, I'm Israel, we all are like one organism and that we all help each other and that ideas that come from one person spread to another and rabbis that I've been learning with over, uh, over iPod for 10 years I've never met came to my shiva and suddenly we met for the first time but we've been learning together and influencing each other and people across the world have had impacts on us and other people and it's just we're like one big network where we, 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 we bounce ideas and, 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 and things off each other. And in a sense, this feels very similar on a sort of individual basis. The fact that not only as a, as a people do we influence each other, but as individuals, we can have so much impact on other individuals. Um, and Lucy you know, has had so much influence on, on Vital and, and Daniel and, 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 and all the, all the uh, transplant uh, recipients, um, and, and uh, this feels like uh, you know uh, every, everyone is connected somehow in, in a strange sort of way. So um, thank you for um, coming here today, and uh, as I say, I, I feel uplifted rather than uh, in tears. I know that uh, it's, it's very been emotional for Karen and to Vitali. Um, but uh, thank you, and thank you to the doctors, and thank you. Uh, just one thing to mention, among the stipulations Rabbi D had for these transplants is that they should be offered to patients based on medical criteria only, both Jews and non-Jews. And in fact, that is what happened. One of the doctors in that room was Dr. Dan Arvut. And he said, the act of this noble family is a point of light in the darkness. And they saved many lives. May the memories of Lucy and her daughters be a blessing for her family, for the entire Jewish people, and for the world to be a point of light in the darkness. My friends, I wish you a great day, and I look forward to seeing you soon in person.